Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have a little bit of bad news for you guys with regards to silencers. Recently, Mike Pappas at Dead Air Silencers was contacted by the BATF and he was told in no uncertain terms that he could no longer sell wipes for the suppressors that he was manufacturing that use them. The Ghost 45 M, which is a very nice 45 ACP suppressor that is manufactured by Dead Air, has a lot of features. We'll talk about those features in this video. This can, one of its many features, is the fact that you can put a wipe at the end of the can. You can set a wipe in there, and that helps to mitigate that first round pop. And first round pop is nothing more than the propellant gases uh, interacting with the air that's inside of the suppressor, the atmosphere that's inside the suppressor, the oxygen primarily, and combusting and making a louder first shot. The subsequent shots that follow, assuming you do it fairly quickly, that oxygen has been burned out of the inside of the can and the can becomes noticeably more quiet. The wipe helps to mitigate that first round pop. Some people put ablative material in su suppressors and ablative material is just a fancy word for saying they pour water in their silencer or they put, put wire pulling grease in their silencer and typically this is only done on handgun suppressors. You don't want to do it to rifle suppressors. So anyway, for many, many years, wipes were used not by themselves, I should say, not in conjunction with baffles, which the 45M has in it, but they were actually the part that helped to suppress the gunshot. You would find old suppressors, like old Cobra suppressors that go with old Ingram Mac 10s, they used a series of these wipes that burned out very quickly. They're only good for maybe 40 shots, and on a submachine gun, basically when one magazine, and now your wipes are burned out of the, the can, you're gonna have to replace them. <sighs> that's all changed. Nowadays, we have precision machines that make baffles that can have a bore that goes between them that's so perfect that the bullet can pass freely through them, come so close to them without touching that it seals the gas behind it. But you still get a little bit of gas that follows the bullet out the end of the suppressor and the wipe in the case of the 45M helps to mitigate that gas escaping. Now, Dead Air Silencers isn't the only modern suppressor company that's coming out with new products that uses wipes. Okay, that's, that's what's interesting about this recent ATF ruling that wipes are no longer considered um, to be non-suppressor parts. They're now considered to be suppressor parts. For the last 20 years, almost 20 years, the ATF has held that wipes by themselves are not considered a suppressor part. Now, a lot of you guys may think that this has to do with the NFA. Ironically, what the definition of a suppressor is and what parts are considered to be a suppressor are outlined in the Gun Control Act of 1968. Which is kind of funny because the Hearing Protection Act that's before Congress right now makes no mention of the 14 mentions of silencers in the Gun Control Act in 1968. It just talks about the NFA. It's a horribly written bill. Anyway, so the ATF contacted Dead Air. They posted on Instagram yesterday saying, guys, we can't sell uh, replacement wipes for our cans anymore. ATF says it's a no-no and only a manufacturer, an 0702 type manufacturer, can produce wipes and install them into suppressors. So if you want to replace your wipe in your 45M, your Ghost 45M Dead Air can, you're going to have to mail it back to Dead Air. They're going to have to unscrew the cap, put a piece of neoprene in there, screw it back on, and mail it back to you. Hardly worth the time or the cost involved to do it. So there was this letter, this Bardwell letter, that was uh, released in August of 1999 that said these were not considered suppressor parts. The ATF, again, just as of yesterday, as far as I know, decided that's not the case, at least in the case of dead air suppressors. What we're going to do today is do a little bit of shooting with this 45M dead air can, and we're going to shoot it with the wipe in place and with the wipe out to kind of get an idea of how loud the can is with with and without that particular wipe being installed but the can also functions just fine without the wipe it's just an add-on bonus one extra feature that the can boasts uh, as compared to other products on the market so let's get started doing that i just wanted to warn you guys out there if you're looking at buying a ghost 45m those cans going out now will no longer have wipes contained in the box replacement wipes and if you're in possession of a can that uses wipes, you might want to be very careful about doing that because right now the ATF appears to be on a rip and they no longer want us being able to put new wipes in our silencers. Let's do some shooting with the Ghost. Yeah. 
absolutely just have to love technology, especially when it constantly screws you over. My Brulu Acara meter, I put it on the charger last night, charged it all night long, get out here today, and it says you have a low battery warning and it just shut itself off. So I won't be able to get actual DB readings off the can with and without the wipe. We'll do that later when I figure out why in the world my uh, batteries aren't charging. So we're just gonna shoot the can with and without the wipe and show you some of the features of the Ghost 45M. Ugh, can't win for losing, guys. This is why I don't gamble in Vegas. So the ammunition I'm gonna use this afternoon to shoot the Ghost is Freedom Munitions 230 grain ball. This is the newly manufactured stuff. It's not the remanufactured stuff. And uh, 230 grain ball load should be subsonic. Most of them are, if not all of them. I have 10 rounds loaded into my FN. This is FNX Tactical. It has a threaded barrel on it and I have the Ghost in its full length configuration attached to the gun. I'm gonna go ahead and fire 10 rounds. It does have the wipe installed. And I'm just about through this wipe, so the next 10, 20 rounds are gonna be about all this wipe can take. Then I'm gonna show you how I take the can apart, take the wipe out, and even how I can shorten this can by a few inches, making it a very short 45 ACP suppressor. All right, let's go ahead and fire off 10 rounds with the wipe in place and see what it sounds like. A little bit of a first round pop, but not really all that loud. But the can itself is very, very quiet. You could probably hear the brass hitting the ground. You might have even been able to hear the trigger reset, although I'm quite a bit of ways away from the microphone. So that wipe doesn't look any worse the wear, but it's getting towards the end of its service life. So now that we fired the gun with the wipe in place, let's go ahead and take the wipe out of it. I'll show you how that's done. And then let's shoot it without that wipe in place. The first step is to obviously make sure that your weapon's clear, no magazine, empty chamber. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the ghost from the barrel of my pistol. Just about there. Okay, now I have the can apart. You'll notice it has an end cap on it here. The 45M comes with a special tool that looks like that has a dead air logo on it, and it just engages the top of that end cap, like so. Now you have a knurled surface that you can unscrew that end cap. And drop it, but I caught it. And there's the wipe inside the end cap. I can pop the wipe out. I'm just gonna stick my pinky through, pop the wipe out of the end cap and there's the old used wipe. Now you wanna be careful because your baffle stack's in there. Make sure your baffles are lined up properly and seated. And then you can screw that end cap back on. Okay, use your tool that's supplied from dead air and just tighten it up. You don't have to overly tighten it. Keep in mind, carbon will build up and you'll get carbon seized. You wanna be able to take your, your suppressor apart. All right, now I have the suppressor set up. You can see the light right through it and there is no wipe in place. Sadly, if you buy one of these now, this is how you're gonna get your can because it may or may not ship with one wipe, but you're not gonna have two. All right, now let's put this on the gun and see how it sounds without the wipe in place. All righty, I have 10 more rounds of 230 grain ball freedom munition stuff loaded up. I now have the suppressor firmly affixed to my FN pistol, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire 10 more rounds, and hopefully you guys will be able to tell the difference without the wipe in place. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm no decibel meter. It has definitely a different tone to it. It's nowhere near 
ringing my ears, not even close. So it's gonna be well under that 140 uh, decibel threshold for hearing safe. It does have a slight difference to it. That wipe definitely improves the sound of the can, but even without it in place, it's still very, very quiet. Now there's another trick that this can has, and I can remove several baffles from the stack by unscrewing this piece here and moving the end cap back, and now I'll have a 45K version or short version. Let's go ahead and take the suppressor apart one more time, shorten it up and see what it sounds like with a couple of baffles missing, but a much smaller, handier package. All right, so now I've taken the suppressor off the FN, and now we're gonna shorten the can down by about four baffles. First, I'm gonna start by taking off the end cap. I'm gonna loosen it using the dead air tool. Take off my end cap. Now there will be one loose baffle inside there. The others seem to stay put, but this is what a baffle looks like. This, folks, is definitely a suppressor part. All right, make sure I get that put back in there right. All right, now you'll notice there's a seam right here. I'm just gonna turn it. You'll notice how the can just unscrews. All right, now I'm gonna take those baffles, set them aside. You can see there's more baffles down inside the can. Take the end cap, screw it back into place. Tighten that down, snug it up, don't over tighten it. And now we have one very small little 45 ACP can. Let's see how this bad boy sounds on the FN. So I would say that looks really good on the FN. Let me close the slide. That looks pretty darn good on there. I will have to admit with those four extra baffles in place, the can looks a little bit unwieldy. This looks like a very short, handy little 45 can. So let's see what it sounds like now. Again, with the same 230 grain ball from Freedom. Let's see what she sounds like in this short configuration. See if we can pick up a noticeable difference with our ears since we don't have the benefit of a decibel meter today. Yeah, that first round pop was definitely louder, but it still seems to be hearing safe. I can hear the bullet popping down range, a little bit more noise down range. I can still hear the bullet hitting the ground down there. But um, yeah, that's pretty short. I think I like the way it sounds better with the extra baffles in place, but if you're looking for a nice short package for your uh, 45 needs, that's gonna be about as short as it can get. Matter of fact, let me show you another brand new product that we'll show in a later video but I want to show it to you now and show you how it stacks up lengthwise to the Ghost in its short configuration. This is the Ghost in its short configuration. We've already seen that. This is the brand new Silencer Co. Omega 45. This is touted as being one of the smallest, lightest 45 cans out there. What makes it different than other suppressors is it has kind of like a unibody. All the suppressor Components are welded together. All the baffles are welded together. So there's no outer sleeve, which gives it a bit more volume. The 45M has an outer sleeve with baffles stacked inside of it. But if you look at the two side by side, you get an idea of just how they stack up size wise. I'm gonna go ahead and say that they're darn near within just a fraction of an inch, darn near the exact same size. So, thought that would be pretty interesting to show to you guys. We'll talk more about the Omega 9, I'm sorry, the Omega 45K later. Today we're just talking about the 45M. But I thought that was pretty interesting to note that the 45M is a, pretty much the exact same size as the new Omega 45K. All right, guys, I know what you're going to say. Mac, you're not going to shoot the Omega 45K for us. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it for you. We'll talk more about it in a future video. This video isn't about the Omega. 45k 10 rounds 230 grain ball let's see what it sounds like as compared to the ghost in its k configuration
guys, to my ears, it sounds a bit quieter or more quiet, whatever the proper English may be. That was pretty darn impressive. I'm definitely gonna have to put these two on the meter next to each other. I wanna say to my ear, this one sounded a bit more quiet, which may very well make sense because it doesn't have an outer sleeve and in theory has more volume than the Ghost. But uh, stay tuned, we'll talk more about the 45K Omega in a future video. Well, we're gonna tie things up this afternoon. I really just wanted to make a quick video, not so much about the Ghost 45M, but more or less to tell you guys about the new changes regarding the ATF and how they view wipes. So we don't know what's gonna happen. Mike Pappas posted in his post, he was gonna look for new materials that would be more durable than the standard neoprene, a hard rubber that's been used in the past that uh, he could use in his suppressors. Plus, I think there may be a legal battle brewing over the use of wipes and suppressors and considering these to be suppressors by themselves. When I learn more, I'll pass that information along to you guys and keep you updated. Um, one other thing I wanted to take note of, the firearms blog mentioned in their article regarding this breaking news story that a FFL, not just an SOT, but just a standard FFL or Federal Firearms Licensee Holder could change wipes out for you. According to Mike Pappas, this is not true. Um, only a manufacturer can produce and install the wipes in your can based under this current decision from the ATF. Your local Federal Firearms Licensee cannot legally do that. And that's coming from Mike, who is in constant communications with the ATF. He says that's not a true statement. So uh, just so you guys know, I mean, the federal law is a complete mess. The ATF is a complete mess. I really hope that Trump gets a director in there that kind of gets this agency under control. But until then, we kind of have to live with the current craziness that is the regulatory body we call the BATFE. All right, guys, so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it informative. I'm sorry to be the, the bringer of bad news, but if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions down below. I do try to stick around for the first couple of days after a video goes live to answer the questions you guys may have. Also, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to swing by and check out Copper Custom. And if you haven't already, please check out Full30.com. That's Full30.com. We've taken all the web's best firearms content creators and brought them under one roof, and that is Full30.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for all those years of support, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Let's fire off 10 more rounds before we head home. We'll see you guys later.